we're gonna go ahead and begin and get the service started for Uncle David Bowman. We're gonna start with the prayer. My brother, pa uh, Pastor Bo from Adon uh, how you pronounce it? Adonai. Adonai Ministries out of um, Paris, California, uh, the home church of uh, this museum. Thank you. So we bow our heads. Father God in heaven, Lord, we ask you, Lord, be with us. Lord, as we are in the morning, Lord, you said you would be with us and comfort us, God. We ask that you would touch this family, Lord, as we celebrate the life of our dear brother, our dear uncle. Lord, our dear Father, we ask you to just bless, Lord, the family. Give them strength. Comfort them in this time of bereavement, God. Only you can. Only you can speak into the hearts of the family, God. And, Lord, we thank you for the comfort you've already given us. We thank you for your anointing and your power. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in, uh, we're in Las Vegas, and uh, we we're, were playing on the weekend. And uh, down down at the Fremont, and uh, I just happened to look in the audience, and uh, there was Uncle David. And he was out there just cheering away, just cheering away. I was like, "Oh man, I got some of my relatives here," you know. And so that, that that really that really was exciting, you know, to see him there. And, you know, I really enjoyed it, you know. So we just want to play a little bit of this song for you. I think it's suiting for the occasion.
this time we'll have a two scripture readings, one from the other, and one from the new. The Old Testament is Psalms 46, 1, and it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And then in John, third chapter, verse 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection of the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. At this time, we'll have the reading of the obituary. The Life and Times of David Bowman. My parents were getting ready for the weekend, but I was getting ready to make my debut into this world on Friday, June 10th, 1932, in St. Francisville, Louisiana. They presented me to my parents, James and Rosanna Bowman. I made my entrance into the world the year Amelia Earhart completed her first nonstop solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean. Also, 37 countries participated in the Summer Olympics, which was held in Los Angeles, California, not knowing that I was one, that I would live there many years later. In 1932, an exciting year to be born when a gallon of gas with 10 cents and a loaf of bread with seven. The average cost of a new car, $610. And lastly, one to buy a new house for $6,510. I was the 11th of 13 children. I spent my formative years with my family in St. Francisville. As an adolescent, I worked on the cane farm. I later relocated to Baton Rouge, where I didn't stay long. I then moved west to be with my brother Jesse in search of better opportunities. My father passed. I took the responsibility for providing for my mother, younger sisters, Isabel and Lucille, as well as my nieces and nephews. If you knew me, you know that I love the Bowman family and I love Westerns. The wife of my youth was Irma Landry. We welcomed a beautiful daughter, Renetta. Later, I met my soulmate, Florence Jackson. I was inter instrumental in educating and nurturing five wonderful children, two from which preceded me in death, Ozetta and Tyrone Townsend. Three still reside in Las Vegas, Nevada, Albert Hall, Manuel Townsend, and Beverly Townsend, where I provided a business role model. I was an entrepreneur, creating and managing my own landscaping business. My business was successful in Los Angeles. I then relocated and moved my thriving landscaping business to the greater Las Vegas area. I continued my journey in Las Vegas by becoming a member of the Light Baptist Church, where I was later appointed as a deacon. After many years of living in Las Vegas with declining health, I relocated to San Diego, where I was able to spend time with my family. After 88 years, I was growing tired and weary and longing for my heavenly home. So I said farewell to my love, loving family and many friends on January 24, 2021. My loving parents, James Pike and Rosanna, seven brothers, Frank, James, Joseph, Albert, Thomas, Woodrow, and Jesse, and two sisters, Fanny and Mary, have all made this incredible transition before me. I now entrust my legacy and loving memory to my beloved children, Rosetta Hedgeman of Apple Valley, California, Albert Hall, Manuel Townsend, and Beverly Townsend of Las Vegas, Nevada, my two sisters, Isabel Thompson of Riverside, California, and Lucille Robinson, and my brother, Willie Bowman, both of San Diego. I also bid a farewell to my grand grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, other family members, and my church family. I love you all. I will now read the acknowledgement. The family of David Bowman wishes to acknowledge with gratefulness each act of kindness, love, and every expression of sympathy shown during our time of bereavement. We are extremely thankful for all of the kind words, phone calls, food, visits, and prayers that have been so gracious, graciously bestowed upon us during this time. I, I have two cards from family and friends. The first one, after a storm, sunshine, after a dry season, rain, after grief, comfort and healing, as surely as day follows night, thinking of you, sending you love, wishing you peace until time heals your heart. May God continually bless you and yours. Of Kathy, Bo, Nicole, and Curtis. The second one, 
with heartfully, heartfelt sympathy and caring prayers for you and your family. May the gift of time in God's present and presence and love help bring healing through time, this time of loss, thinking of you. May God continually bless you and yours. Love, Wade and Elaine. Thank you. At this time, if anyone wanted to come up and give um, some reflections or remarks, you, you may at this time. What can I say in two minutes <laughs> about my uncle? He was one of my favorite uncles. I had two. Two left, Uncle Willie and Uncle David. But what I remember most about Uncle David is when we were kids, he would always remember our birthday. At least he thought he did. Because every time he seen us, it was five of us. He was one of our birthdays. <laughs> he would come to the house and we'd say, it's my birthday, Uncle David. <laughs> he said, didn't you just have a birthday? No, that was Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> the next time he'd come and Melvin would do it or Jay would do it. And so we always were celebrating a birthday every time we seen Uncle David. And he always made sure we had everything we needed. If it was discipline that you needed, you got that from Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Melvin know that one all too well. <laughs> but everything else came from, you know, you know, if we needed anything, Uncle David was right there with us. And I just want to, uh, I'm sad that he's not here, but I'm happy that he's no longer suffering. You know, when I, I, I saw him, and, and the last time I saw him when we did a video, and I could tell he was in a lot of pain. And he was the kind of man that wouldn't tell you he was in pain. Like, he would never tell me. I said, David, how you feeling? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm all right, baby. But then he talked to Renetta, and he told Renetta how much pain he was in. So she would call and tell him, well, no, he in pain. But he would always try not to let you know he was in pain. He, he was a really, you know, a man, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was always kind to us and always made sure we had everything that he needed. And I'm glad that we were able to help him when he needed us to. I love all my family. I love all you guys. He loved everybody. He loved the last time when the, the last Zoom last month. I just want to let everybody know that was on the Zoom. He was laughing at all y'all. <laughs> Yeah, he called them all fools. Yeah, look at them. Because <laughs> they was acting up, you know, saying stuff. And he was, he was, but he had a wonderful time. If you could have saw the smile on his face when he saw his family on that Zoom call. I love you, Uncle David. Yeah, to echo those, those sentiments, I guess. For people that don't know our family, we we uh, we had these family reunions that, that are just like you know a lot of people say you know we got to have a family reunion, get together, break bread, and do the things that we want to do at family reunions, right? But for some reason, our, our family reunions were so large, and then once you became a family member, whether it be marriage or friendship or whatever the case may be, you couldn't get out. You know what I mean? So it was, like, it was almost like you were always part of that family. You know, you were always part of us from going forward, no matter what you did, no matter if you were married or mother, you know, whatever the case may be. If you were friends and you were married and things along those lines, you, uh, uh, you always were part of the family. And so what, one of the things that I remember mostly about Uncle David was he loved those times. He loved the family reunions. It's okay, let her come up here. All right, come on, baby. So, <laughs> so what would happen is he would love to be around his family, as Lisa was saying in the last time with the Zoom, the new technology and things along those lines. He, it gave him the opportunity to, to do that again, to be with his family. To, you know, it was like a family reunion for him again. You know, what I mean? that's why he was so happy to see everyone. And as you know, you know, he, he moved to Las Vegas. And then as we got a little older, because he was there for some time, you know, you, you would always, whenever you made a trip to Las Vegas, when some of us do, you know, <laughs> he would always, either you 
went to Vegas and you had to stop by his house. It was a ritual, you know, you had to go by, you know, and then you get together. Or if you were with some friends or something like that where you couldn't have an opportunity to go by because you were with other people, you would tell him where you were and he would come. He would come to wherever you were, your party, whoever the case may be, would be there and they would be introduced to Uncle David, you know, because he would break bread with you there, he would meet you there. And so in his later years, or when I was wind up going to Las Vegas and staying with him for a while there for, for eight or nine months or whatever, it got to the point where, you know, it was, that was, I was thinking, well, man, you know, I'm gonna be in Vegas too, then it's gonna be my home, you know? Uh, whatever took me out of, out of Las Vegas, but just making the point that Vegas will never be the same, ever. No matter how many times I go back from this point forward, it'll never be the same because Uncle Davis wasn't there. So we thank y'all for coming. He's a wonderful guy, uh, as everybody here knows already. So thank y'all for coming. I had the opportunity to learn about David uh, through Lisa, Andrea, and Marquise. And I got to, I said, well, you mind if I call you uncle? He said no, but that's what he felt like to me because he was just a loving person. And uh, the last time we were all together it was Marquise, Jay, myself, and Uncle David. And so, but before uh, Jay got there, he said, uh, "Oh, you were at the house because everybody's here." I go, "Yeah." He said, "I'm on my way." So I go, "Okay, well, come on down." So we just had a fun time, and we had some barbershop talk that I would not say what we was talking about, <laughs> but it was all in love. But he, uh, he, he can't tell that story. That's right. But uh, again, uh, this was a loving family, and I'm glad I was be able to be a part of it. <laughs> that part. Anyway, that was my father's brother. And um, the last time I seen Uncle David, we went over there because all he ate was tacos and noodles. So I went over there, me and my sister went over there, he was sitting on the wall with one shoe on and one shoe off. I said, Uncle David, what you doing? Oh, I'm just sitting on the wall looking at the pretty girls walk by. I said, what? But Uncle David, he always smiled. And I remember my husband would go to Vegas all the time. He would sneak, you know, he loved to gamble. So Uncle David would tell him, come on up. But every time he would get up there, he'd be like, uh, who are you again? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm rising. Who is Roz? <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. So my husband would always sneak up there to Vegas and go to Uncle David's house uh -huh. and stay there and gamble, lose all his money, and Uncle David ship him back home. <laughs> but he was a good, good man, and um, I loved him. Yeah, Uncle David was... I mean, what can we say about him? That man was crazy, you know? And I remember his little last incident where my nephew didn't have to go rescue him. I said, I could just imagine that trip down where he was with the people he was with. But I said, thank God that God was watching over him, you know? He wasn't hurt, he wasn't harmed. He was good, you know? He came back and that's just a blessing on how his spirit was, you know? Because most time when people are doing bad things, bad things happen, but because of his spirit, God brought him there but then, that when it goes. <laughs> so thank everybody for coming, and I love my cousin over there. And that's all I have to say. Um, for the past six months, Uncle David lived with us, and we shared many good. <laughs> we shared many good memories, and like Ross said, he loved tacos and he loved noodles. <laughs> and we would have to crush up the noodles in the pack and then make them. They look so nasty. <laughs> and we gave him a nickname one day. We called him Uncle Toe because um, Toe stands for tacos over everything. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> right now we're going to go ahead and release the doves. They're getting a little restless. Can you hear me? Yeah. First of all, I'd like to give a heart. Now to everyone out here, hang there last week. Supporting this family in this difficult time. But the white doves we're releasing here today is symbolic. 
created in Jay's soul flying to heaven with the help of his family and friends, their family and friends, to lovingly guide them on their way. Now, one thing I want you to remember are the gifts that they left. The gift could be love. The gift could be advice. The gift could be a laugh you had sitting around the table. But the next time you see a white dove, I want you to remember that gift. <laughs> Take a moment and smile. And I want you to think of Jay and Dave. When I release these birds, please join me in saying goodbye to them.
truly believe Uncle David was a good Samaritan. He was a good leader. Uh, there are many stories that you guys all have, and you guys all know. I'll share some that I know. Andrea has, in her car, she didn't have two sun visors. They were, they were missing. Uncle David said in the car, he looked at me. He told Andrea, he says, we're going to go get you some of those. Because this guy right here is doing his job. <laughs> I said, okay, Uncle David. Uh, and he, he bought the sun visors. And then there was another, another story. Him and Uncle Willie were at the house, and they were watching service. And we had watched about five Mount Heroes. And by this time, I'm Mount Heroes out. And, uh, and so to break the ice, because they don't like to watch football. So I said, uh, Uncle Willie, you know, he was telling me how they all came from Louisiana to here. And he pointed at Uncle David, he said, the family right there, he said, he had a party, he had a brand new car every weekend. I said, huh? He said, yeah, he got a brand new car every weekend. I looked down and said, well, how did Uncle David get a brand new car every weekend? He said, well, on Friday, he would go and buy a car. And he said, just before they closed, they would give him the car. And Uncle David knew that they couldn't check his credit until Monday. So, but by Tuesday, he was taking his car back. So, but, uh, but Uncle Willie said, but on Friday, he had a brand new car. And Uncle David said, I drove those cars fast. Uh, and we would sit and laugh and just have a good time. I struggle with Uncle David. I struggle. Two things I struggle with. Get him in the shower and cut his hair. And he said, I'm going to get in that shower with you. I said, I'm not getting in that shower with you either. <laughs> but I need you to go take a shower. And he, he did it. And, and um, so he tells this story with, with, with his sister. Uh, so she, he had had two cars. And she had, she had one of them. And he had came to the house. And he had said, Seal, where's my car? And she said, oh, well, it's up the street. He said, why is my car up the street and not at the house? And she said, he said, she said, well, I ran out of gas. And Uncle David said, well, you will never use my car again if you don't always run out, out of gas. So we had a good time with Uncle David the last six, seven months. Um, picking him up, getting him from Ensenada. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Because he came and he was just an amazing man. What we see today is death, and death never has the final say. And I truly believe that Uncle David knew that, that death never has the final say. Uh, Jesus, in the 11th chapter of John, was going to see about his friend Lazarus. And as he was making his way to Bethany, the sister of Lazarus named Martha, she runs out and she meets Jesus, and she says, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And they had this discussion, and in the discussion it says, she believed in the resurrection, and Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in me, you will raise up and rise up, and you will live again. Uncle David believed that, and I truly know he did. To the family, I don't, I don't understand, and I, I can't grasp my hands around how it is that we have two at the same time. Sunday morning, the 24th, we get the call about Uncle David. And 36 hours later, we get the call about Uncle Jay. And even up until this very moment, I can't understand why. But I will leave you with this. I will leave you with this. Is that God does everything well. I'm reminded in Genesis when God created the heavens and the earth and God said, let there be light. And he saw that the light was good. Whenever God speaks, and whenever God has spoken, we have to rest assured. We have to put our faith in God to know that everything that God does is good, perfect, and right. So I'm going to leave you with this to the family. It's the, the lyrics of the hymn. And it goes, in peace like a river attendeth my life. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, whatever my lot, God has taught me to say, it is well in my soul. I'll leave you with that. I'm present with you, Renetta. I'm present with you, Grandma. I'm present with you. I'm present with all of you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, his final resting place. Amen and thank you. Mm -hmm. 